the B plus is growing and we want you to be a part of it. So if you have an idea for a podcast or if you want to you know, write reviews for shows, whether that's WWE, New Japan, local shows especially, you know we have a big focus on Aussie Graps here. So if you go out to shows in Melbourne, we specifically need people in New Zealand, Tasmania, and Queensland. If you go out to shows in those areas, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. We would love to work with you. If you have a passion for wrestling and you want to write about anything wrestling, it can be anything. It can be listicles. It can be in-depth articles, opinion pieces, show reviews, whatever you want to do. If it's wrestling, it's fair game. Shoot us a message or send an email to the B plus at unchained.media. That's the B plus at unchained.media. Let us know what you want to do and we'll get back to you and we'll we'll work something out because the B plus is growing and we want to grow the B plus family. Now on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Sorry, no speak English. Tell me, yeah. goodbye and good night. Ball two on bar. It's still real to me, damn it. Tell me, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Ball three. Tomas covers three handle family credenza. Unchained.media presents the B Plus Podcast with your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Number four, on board. All right, fellow B Plus players, welcome to the B Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Friday. You know what that means. It's our favorite day of the week. It's Aussie Graps Day here at the B Plus. Today is the day we sit down and look at everything that is happening in the world of Australian professional wrestling, as well as talking to an Aussie grappler or grappler adjacent person. This week, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to Adrian, the mind behind World Series Wrestling, very exciting stuff, so we'll get to that shortly, but first, first, let's take a look at this week in Aussie Graps News. Starting us off in the news this week, PWI released their top 100 female talents for 2018. Uh, the, sorry, it's not female anymore, it used to be 50 female, now it's 100 women, uh, which, you know, they like to go with the alliteration, 100 women. 50 female. Makes sense. 100 women. Uh, So it's the top 100. Now, PWI is a little strange. They do things with kayfabe. So amount of wins and things like that uh, matter as opposed to quality of matches. So the number one this year was Ronda Rousey, of course, having made her debut and being completely undefeated and the new Raw Women's Champion, etc. She's the number one. So to give you an idea of how the list works, it's all within kayfabe for the most part, and uh, the top three this year were Ronda Rousey, Alexa Bliss, and Charlotte. So you can see what kind of criteria they're looking at. Now, we had seven, count them, seven of our own Aussie and New Zealand female wrestlers make this list. At number 19, Tony Storm, the Mae Young Classic winner, of course. At number 30, Dakota Kai. At number 40, Shazza McKenzie. That's our highest ranking non-WWE competitor. At number 44, Madison Eagles, proving, Mikey, proving that Shazza McKenzie is the better women's wrestler from Australia. I'm sticking to it. Uh, Rhea Ripley came in at number 63. 64 was Tennille Dashwood, formerly known as Emma, unfortunately out on the shelf at the moment with an injury, but, you know, signed to Women of Honor. And 92, Peyton Royce. Glaring omission here, Billy Kay. Where is Billy Kay? Why is Billy Kay not on this list? How can you have Peyton Royce in the list but not Billy Kay? It makes zero sense to me. But again, this is a kayfabe thing, so maybe the fact that Peyton Royce was included in the NXT Fatal 4-Way Women's Championship match. I I mean, 
I don't know how you can include Peyton Royce and not Billy Kay. It, to me, they're a package deal. They should be joint 92. Everything they do, they do together. The PWI 100 women is decidedly not iconic. However, a lot of our girls did make the list. So congratulations to all of those girls for their accomplishments throughout the year. Uh, it's I call them girls. They're women. I don't know why I'm calling them girls. It's just sort of how I talk. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. But uh, congratulations to all the women from Australia and New Zealand who made the list. It's very exciting stuff. And it just shows that we have a plethora of talent coming out of this country uh, that are ready to take on the world. Hashtag now we conquer. And uh, that's not even touching on some of the names here that are ready to go out and take that next step as well. So very exciting stuff for those women in particular and also for Australian wrestling in general. Moving on from there and taking a look overseas, Robbie Eagles is still over in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Well, he's probably back now because the, the tour has ended. But for this last week, Robbie was still in Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling for the Power Struggle Tour for the Super Junior Tag League. He had his first singles match. Unfortunately, his partner, Taiji Ishimori, suffered an injury in their last match of the tournament. They did not make the finals, but Robbie was still Robbie was on the Power Struggle main card, which was a fantastic show. He was uh, teaming up with Tama and Tanga against the team of Great Bash Heel and Kushida. They picked up the win. Robbie wasn't involved in the finish, but they did pick up the win. The Bullet Club OGs got a victory there. And Robbie also had his first singles match in New Japan against Yoda Suji, one of the Young Lions. He picked up the victory there as well, his first singles victory in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And after the match, he cut a quick promo into Kevin Kelly's headset. Kevin Kelly was putting him over, doing a great job on commentary, as he always does. We talk about that on the King of Sports podcast, which you can hear every Wednesday right here on the B+. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But uh, yeah, if you want to hear us talk about Robbie in New Japan, that's where you want to go, King of Sports cast. But just wanted to update you, he did have his first singles match and his first singles victory. And Kevin Kelly on commentary was putting him over the whole time saying, you know, this is going to be just the first that we're seeing of Robbie Eagles. He's going to be back. So very excited for that. But uh, speaking of coming back, Robbie is coming back to Australia. He's here this weekend for Newcastle Pro Wrestling. And this week we got the announcement that Robbie is coming back to Wrestle Rampage December 1st for All or Nothing. This show has a big main event with a huge five-way title match for the Australian National Championship. Jonah Rock, Damien Slater, AJ Istria, Robbie Hart, and Rat Daddy. No idea where Robbie's going to fit on this show, but I'm hoping for a match against Tommy Knight, the prodigy. Robbie Eagles against the prodigy. I feel like that'll be a good one and, and a, a nice little precursor to maybe eventually seeing Robbie Eagles versus Tomohiro Ishii in New Japan Pro Wrestling. No, I, I don't want Robbie to get murdered, but I do want to see Robbie versus Tommy Knight. That one's in my backyard down here on December 1st. So looking forward to seeing Robbie again in December. Before I move off Robbie Eagles and New Japan Pro Wrestling, I have heard rumors that New Japan Pro Wrestling are coming back in February. So this came from Someone actually posted in the Melbourne City Wrestling fan community that they took a photo of Robbie Eagles coming out for his match at Power Struggle in Osaka, and, and they said that uh, they spoke to the CEO of New Japan while they were there, and they said they're aiming to come back to Australia in February. That's the words that we used on this post. It's aiming to come back to Australia in February. So, fingers crossed, we're going to get another New Japan Pro Wrestling tour in February, and unless you're in the Melbourne City Wrestling fans group, you heard it here first. Remember that. But yeah, February, it looks like New Japan Pro Wrestling might be coming back down under, which is fantastic. We'll get to see Robbie Eagles as part of the BCOGs live and in person. Also overseas, Mick Moretti has a new YouTube show. Uh, it's a it's a spin-off of Trophy Life. Now, for those who listen to the show regularly, you know we are big fans of Elliot Sexton's Trophy Life. It is probably the funniest thing in professional wrestling at the moment. It, it's it's fantastic. It's right up there. If you like being the elite and all those sorts of things, Trophy Life is better. Putting that out there, Trophy Life is better. Not not in any small part, because we get to see people like our own Robbie Eagles, like Mick Moretti, make cameo appearances on, on this show. Adam Brooks was in an episode, you know, so it's it's a very Aussie wrestling, and it's it's fantastic. You know, Elliot Sexton's hilarious. But uh, Mick Moretti has, after featuring on the Halloween special, which we talked about last week, Mick Moretti has spun off his own spin-off series from Trophy Life. It's called The Dream Scheme. Season 1, Episode 1 is available on YouTube. You can check the link in the show notes. There was a, a guest appearance by Razorhawk of Chikara fame from the, the Cyberhawks 2000. Uh, so... Yeah, really, really funny stuff from Mick Moretti starting his own show, chasing his own trophy life. It's called The Dream Scheme. Definitely check it out. 
Something else you should be checking out is EPW Reawakening. I'm still waiting as I record this. It is Thursday lunchtime. I'm waiting for EPW Reawakening to hit my Vimeo. I have not received the notification yet. As soon as I do, I will post about it on Facebook. It may be up by the time this show is released. It may not. I don't know. What I do know is it looks like a fantastic show, and we have new tag team champions in the Street Gang Hooligans. The Street Gang Hooligans laid out their challenge to any team in Australia to take them on, and that's being answered. We saw on One Fall, this was on One Fall Entertainment, they did this. So One Fall are a, a YouTube and uh, Facebook platform where that do much like we do, cover all the Australian and New Zealand professional wrestling. They do a bang up job of it. And they uh, are quite often at shows interviewing, which is something we want to get to eventually. But, you know, we, we're sort of still working things out to get to that YouTube uh, platform. We're, we're not quite there yet. We're focused on the podcast here, but the YouTube is coming in the new year. So keep an eye peeled for that. But in the meantime, One Fall Entertainment have you covered. And the Street Gang Hooligans cut a promo after their match saying that they challenge anyone in Australia. And of course, they are going to Studio Superstars as well. Studio Superstars is the new TV show being put out by One Fall Entertainment. So that's being produced in a TV studio in Melbourne for RMI TV. It's like a student for the RMIT University. I'm not too sure, but I am sitting down with some of the guys from One Fall to talk about it. So you'll get all the goss in a couple of weeks when we do a preview show for Studio Superstars with the guys behind it. Uh, for now, though, all I know is it's it's going to be a, a TV show taped in a studio it's very exciting. They've been releasing some matches. Uh, so I we know I don't like to cover too many match announcements or else it would just be me reading out all, all day, every day, just this person's facing this person, this person's facing that person. I don't think that's the most entertaining way to spend our time here on the podcast. I, I like to just sort of freewheel it. But there are some match announcements for this Studio Superstars, uh, which which uh, seem very exciting. So I wanted to run down a couple of these. So they, they are at this first set of TV tapings having a championship scramble match with Gino Gambino taking on Jonah Rock, taking on Dowie James, taking on Robbie Eagles, taking on Logan Gray, taking on Adam Brooks in a championship scramble match. And they're also having a tag title tournament, which will culminate in a fatal four-way tag title match. And you got and street gang hooligans are going to be involved there. The untouchables are there as well. So they may, end up facing off once again. Uh, a bunch of tag teams are going to be involved in that one. So very exciting stuff coming in Melbourne for Studio Superstars. That starts November 28th. I will have a full preview podcast for that closer to the actual date, probably on the day before that'll come out. But if you're in Melbourne, definitely get your tickets to Studio Superstars with One Fall Entertainment. Speaking of Melbourne, I, I know I say I don't like to do match announcements too much, but I'm going to do this. This week is a big one with match announcements because there's been a, quite a few that I think I think are noteworthy. Uh, so let's take a look quickly at Lockie versus Dowie 2. Lockie Hendricks has been asking for one more match against Dowie James since their confrontation at New Horizons, which Dowie James came out on top in. Lockie has been asking for this match. He's saying he just needs one more chance. He was talking about it on the On the Turnbuckle podcast this week. He was talking about it when he was interviewed backstage after the match, he just needs one more chance. And Dowie categorically denied. He said, no, I, I beat you in the elimination match. I beat you here. There is no need for another match. You're not in my league, son. It's not happening. But he finally relented when, when Lockie Hendricks made an impromptu appearance, uh, interrupting Dowie teaching at the MCW Academy. Dowie's trying to lead a class and then, and then in comes Lockie Hendricks getting in his face. Everyone's trying to tell Lockie to leave, but Lockie will not leave until Dowie agrees to a match. He, he accuses Dowie. He's like, look, you think you're a wrestler's wrestler? Face me in an Iron Man match then. Come on, let's let's do it. Let's have an Iron Man match. Dowie finally relented. We are going to get a 30-minute Iron Man match at MCW Endgame November 17 next week. That's very exciting. I'm so excited for this match. I cannot wait for this one to come up on demand. I was hoping to get tickets. I was hoping to get tickets to go. Uh, I was going to fly over for Endgame, but... But with my birthday just the week after and then Christmas coming up around the corner, I didn't make it work. I am, however, flying to Sydney in December. I will be at the PWA Fridays for the Babes event, so I'm very much looking forward to that. But that's neither here nor there. MCW, Lockie vs. Dowie, 30-minute Ironman match at Endgame. That is insane. I'm really looking forward to that one. And while we're talking match announcements, we may as well touch on it. On my birthday week, World Series Wrestling have their tour. They're skipping Adelaide. It bums me out. I talked to Adrian about it briefly. But 
the announcements for World Series Wrestling this week, uh, the quadruple main event in Perth. Perth, you need to sell this show out with this card. Holy crap, this card is impressive. Austin Aries versus Flip Gordon for the World Series Wrestling Championship. Cody versus Walter. First time ever. Marty Skrull versus Damian Slater. And you get an X Division Championship match when Brian Cage defends against Bandito. A quadruple main event. Uh, th- I mean, you've still got, obviously, on the undercard, you're going to have things like Indy Hartwell and Lena Cross. This, <laughs> the Untouchables will be there. The, a lot of the EPW stars are going to be there. It's going to be an insane night. How this is not sold out already, I do not know. But that one needs to sell out, Perth. Don't disappoint me. But that's not all. So matches have been coming out for World Series Wrestling over the last few weeks. We've got Jonah Rock versus Flip Gordon in Melbourne. Uh, Marty Skrull versus Adam Brooks also in Melbourne. Walter versus Brian Cage. First time ever that that match is going down. That's going to happen in Melbourne. You've got Brandy Rhodes versus Shazza in Sydney. Lena in Perth. Indy Hartwell and Erica Reed take her on in a triple threat match in Melbourne. Adam Brooks versus Volta in Melbourne as well. Melbourne is spoiled, man. Some of the matches Melbourne are getting. And that weekend is two nights of World Series Wrestling, followed by a daytime show with Glow in Real Life Part 2 at Evie's Disco Diner with Tessa freaking Blanchard. What a weekend of wrestling you guys have in Melbourne that weekend. That's Melbourne. That's November 23rd, 24th, 25th. Holy crap. But World Series Wrestling... We talk about them a lot. They do a lot of really fantastic work. They're building up Aussie talent to face off against international superstars, the best of the indie wrestling world, come over to our shores once every three months or so. And I had the great pleasure of sitting down to talk with Adrian from World Series Wrestling. He's the man behind the entire thing. So let's have a chat with Adrian. And then after the interview, I will hit you with what's happening near you this weekend. All right, joining me now is the man behind one of our absolute favorite wrestling promotions here at the B+, World Series Wrestling. Adrian from World Series Wrestling, how are you, man? Wonderful, mate. How are you going? Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm, I'm really excited to be talking to you. Like I said, World Series Wrestling is a B plus favorite promotion. It's one that we are huge fans of, the way you guys mix international talent with Australian talent. Big fans of everything you're doing, so thank you for coming on. We're, we're rapidly approaching the next tour. It's right around the yes, corner. Yes, certainly is. So you're, you're right in peak busy time. So, Yes, uh, yeah, you're right. The countdown's definitely on and the workload is at an all-time high, but uh, wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. So, I mean, it's we're approaching one year mark since the return as well, since the World Series Wrestling return last year. But Yeah, you're right. Uh, before we get to talking about the return, a lot of people may not even realize the history that World Series Wrestling has. You guys actually started way back when, in 2005. So what can you tell us about the early years? How did you get into promoting wrestling events? Okay, well, it's, it's, it, even, it even goes back earlier than that, to be honest. So um, back in about 1999, I started promoting our my first of our wrestling uh, tours, and uh, it was just using the local Australian talent, and the tour was called Wrestle Rage, and it was just Adelaide-based at Feverton Theatre, and uh, I, I ran a few shows over the course of a couple of years and enjoyed it and it was, you know, just a, a learning curve for me and, um, yeah, just, just trying to get some, you know, different talent from different promotions in sort of Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide and, and would put on the, the shows under the Wrestle Rage banner and then I had a hiatus for a couple of years and then sort of returned with, uh, with World Series Wrestling and the first tour we did was back in 2005, as you, as you mentioned, and... Um, yeah, we just brought in some really big names, and it was sort of the first time where we sort of integrated Australian wrestlers. So back then we had um, TNT on the tour. We had another uh, a famous Melbourne wrestler who was quite iconic at the time. His name was Lobo, uh, and then some other guys like Lee Star and, and a few others um, who were all sort of fused into into key matches. So uh, yeah, the first tours we sort of featured, you know, the Jeff Jeff Jarrett and Rhino and AJ Styles. Samoa Joe, all these guys which are now big names in the WWE. We had the Dudley Boys on the tour. We had um, uh, the late great Test, and then other other stars like Super Dragon, who's from you know pro wrestling Gorilla fame. Yeah. Um, Frankie Kazarian, who's part of you know SoCal Uncensored these days in Ring of Honor. Yeah, was um, Kid Cash at, on the first one as well? Or was that the second one? Oh, that was the second one. We okay. had Kid Cash as yeah. well. Yeah, and we had Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan as he's known now, and um, 
yeah, Billy Kimmel and stuff. But yeah, in those early days, even those that first tour we did, you know, I, n- I never forget when we booked it. We had you know TNT versus uh, Frankie Kazarian on one night, then another night was Super Dragon versus TNT versus Frankie Kazarian. So it gave some local stars an opportunity to shine with some you know uh, similar workers that are, that were based in the US. Um, and even Lobo teamed up with. Um, a guy called Jesus Aguilera, who was a Carlitos bodyguard at the time, to take on the Dudley Boys. So again, just trying to mix some Australians in with the international flavour um, in those early days. Right. So that's always been the goal: is to to get that mix and and making sure that the Aussie talent are having that exposure. One hundred percent. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's, that's something that we 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 back hard. So, like you mentioned, you had names like Jeff Jarrett, Dudley Boys other established WWE, WCW, ECW stars. But you were also on the cutting edge of independent talent. Um, I mean, you mentioned Brian Danielson, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Samoa Joe. Uh, Is that something that's always been important to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um, I'm now a 40-year-old guy. I grew up with Hulk Hogan and, you know, the Junkyard Dog and the British Bulldogs and all that kind of stuff. But as as I've gotten older, obviously my... um, passion for wrestling and interest in wrestling has evolved so it's changed so no longer do I want to see Doink the Clown I like to see um, you know uh, a little bit uh, left of the middle wrestling and when I say left of the middle that left of the middle has now become almost mainstream so Ring of Honor was sort of a little bit underground especially you know 10-12 years ago when Austin Aries was breaking through when Brian Danielson was making a name for himself as the American Dragon guys like Nigel McGuinness and they had a following, even here, even in Australia here, you know, we couldn't watch it on TV, obviously, but yeah. um, people read about it in magazines, you could buy tapes and all that sort of stuff, so there was definitely a thirst for some real wrestling, so to speak, you know, so when we had the opportunity to, to book like AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels, which was like the red-hot indie feud at the time, uh, it was a pleasure to have a best of three series on that first tour because it just showed Australian fans who had maybe come to World Series Wrestling, who maybe only knew WWE, uh, you know, a great opportunity to see some, some, real, you know, some real work rate style wrestling. So uh, I've always tried to, to mix the best of both worlds, so to speak. Yeah, and now it's evolved to what we see with what we're, with what we're doing these days. Yeah. And, I mean, so back in 2007 was the, the last one uh, of the first iteration, I guess you could say, of World yes, Series yep, Wrestling. Yep. Uh, what yeah. prompted the big break? a decade off oh life life right yeah yeah so so as as people may or may not be aware i'm not a full-time wrestling promoter i have my own uh, business that i operate and uh sort of 10 years ago when i took the hiatus just just real life work uh, marriage children all those things just sort of uh stepped in the in the way of it and and to be honest back then wrestling wasn't a cultural favorite like you know back in uh, 07 you know, the WWE was sort of in a bit of a rut and Ring of Honor hadn't really taken to the next level. New Japan weren't at the heights it is these days. Yeah. Things like that. So just f- fans in Australia were limited and slowly, slowly it built up, built up. And then in the last few years, there's definitely been a resurgence in the interest in wrestling, I think, anyway, not just in Australia but around the world. And um, and even my interest in wrestling, which I've always had, just sort of became more... Uh, relevant, like oh, I was seeking seeking out matches, hunting down, you know, wanting to watch footage of different different talents that I was seeing on Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever. So um, my interest sort of re re peaked, if that makes sense. Right. And um, and I sort of thought, well, you know, there, and there's some great t- uh, talent in Australia too. And I'm based in Adelaide, so I would head down and visit uh, the different shows here in Adelaide and watch some of the talent. In my mind, I thought, wow. If only this talent was around 10 years ago when I was doing it, you know, how, yeah. how great would it have been? And I sort of thought, well, hang on, why can't I do it again? Mm-hmm. So um, that's sort of what started it. So it was actually, the, it, as I said, the international resurgence, but also just the um, the standard of Australian wrestling had lifted so much that I just sort of thought we need a, not that we need because they were already giving themselves a platform, but I just sort of thought it would be a great to, to do something to try and help uh, in a little way to give uh, a platform to some of these guys. These guys. Yeah, absolutely. So that actually kind of echoes a lot of my journey uh, with wrestling as well. So I, I was a, a big fan when I was a kid and through the early 2000s and what have you, and my fandom yeah. kind of peaked with early Ring of Honor and and uh, TNA and that sort of thing. 
And around sure. 2008 or so, I kind of dropped off as well. And then it sort of came back when I was like, wait, Daniel Bryan's in, well, Brian Danielson's in WWE yeah, now. Yeah. Let me tune yeah, into yeah. this and see this whole Yes Movement thing. And I kind of came back in a really big way and then realized how accessible everything was. So I kind of, I understand completely how that may have happened and how that journey has happened. Do you think there is more of a market in Australia for wrestling now than there was 10 years ago? Like, is it noticeable to you? Well, you know what it is? I... I... When I did the tours 10 years ago, like when we did that tour, the first one with Jeff Jarrett and Rhino and all the rest of them, like, you know, our Melbourne show, we I think we got, I can't remember now, maybe like 2,300 people. The Sydney show, we had a couple of thousand people. Wow. Uh, even Newcastle, I think we got, I don't know, like 1,600 or 1,400 people or something like that. So they were good crowds. So mm. I think there's always been a market. Um, and now that, now that we're doing the tour, I've sort of scaled them on a level that's more intimate as well. So mm. I'm happy with sort of, 500 seat venues up to I mean Sydney's a little bit bigger that goes to sort of 900 or a bit more but I'm trying to create more of an intimate feeling I'm I'm not into I mean I, 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 obviously I'm never going to say no to 2,000 fans at a show but <laughs> I just like the atmosphere that a a 500 or 600 or or whatever seat venue gives and the fans can chant and and they're so passionate and I, I just feel as that that whole intensity. Adds to, adds to the show, if that makes sense. Absolutely. That's something we talked about after the Super Showdown weekend. So a, a bunch yes. of us were in attendance for both the Melbourne City Wrestling Show uh, yeah. and we which had, I think, about 700 people. And, of course, the 70,000-seat extravaganza that was uh, the, the MCG. Following night. Yeah. 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 And and we all enjoyed the Melbourne Pre- City Wrestling Show more because it was intimate. You're in there. You're packed on top of each other. You're yeah. all yeah. feeling the same things. And I think that's what wrestling is, for me at least. I, I think so too. I think, I mean, that, that's because I didn't go to Super Showdown, not because I'm not a fan or wouldn't have liked to have gone. I just thought I'm going to go there and it's just going to be a disappointment. And I'm not saying that the fans went were disappointed because I, I watched it myself on television and then I thought it was, you know, the lighting and sound and everything was fantastic and everyone did a great job and all the rest of it. But yeah, me, myself, maybe it's my age, but I just, I prefer to see you two in the Thebiton Theatre, for example, as opposed to Adelaide Oval, like just the atmosphere is a, is a completely different thing and that's the same how I like to watch my wrestling, just to be a little bit more intimate, it's more, I don't know, it's like watching SANFL football versus AFL football, like it just has a different grittiness to it, I guess, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's just me. No, well, I, I'm with you 100%. Like when you said that, I immediately thought of watching uh, My Chemical Romance at Sydney Cricket Ground versus seeing okay. them two years before that I saw them at this little theatre in Sydney. I can't remember what it was called. Roundhouse at the University oh, the of Roundhouse. New South Wales. Yeah, we yeah. did a show there in 2007, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great venue, great atmosphere. Yeah, really good, really good venue, the Roundhouse. So uh, it, so I, I completely understand. I mean, you two wouldn't be my choice. You're showing your age a little bit. Oh, you two. <laughs> not, not my choice either, but I just remember they came and did a concert in the in the Amy Stadium 10 years ago. But, <laughs> yeah, okay. um, yeah, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, no, of course. You see yeah. bands on, on that scale have never... Never yeah, it's, lives up to it. it's a different thing. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. 100 episodes. We made it. We made it to 100 episodes. And what better way to celebrate than by sharing Threadbox with all the B-plus players across Australia. Threadbox is a subscription service for men that brings you a personalized shopping and stylist experience for any budget. You get direct email access to a personalized stylist who, who builds out a style profile for you and sends you all the clothes you need. So if you need singlets this month, you're going to get singlets. If you need belts this month, you're going to get belts. You let them know, and they're going to send that out to you. There are multiple packages available, and you always get more worth than you pay for, because Threadbox know all the best brands. CJ and I both got deliveries this month, and uh, amongst our new threads were KSCY, Offends, Cheap Monday, NXP, and more. So... You can, you can check out our unboxing videos on the Facebook page, or if you go to threadbox.com.au, you can check out past packages that they've sent out there. We believe in Threadbox because Threadbox want to help us, you, and men everywhere look better without all the bother of having to shop. In, in as, as low a price as $40, what more can you ask for? You're going to get more value than you pay for. Just for our fans, if you put in the code the B plus fifteen at checkout, you're going to get fifteen percent off your first box. Head to threadbox.com.au and use the code the B plus fifteen to get your box today. So, so 2017, you make the comeback. Yes. You know, Austin Aries, Ricochet, X Pac, Brian Cage. You know, once again combining the best of the independent world with the best of Australian wrestling. 
Um, yes, what, yes, yes, what yes. goes into selecting international talent for you? Just my gut feel. Right. <laughs> to be to be perfectly honest, I can glamorize it and whatever, but I just I know uh, what talent I like, what talent I'd like to see, and I just think, oh, okay, hopefully the fans have a similar taste bud to, to my to my like. So so there's more to it than that. But yeah, generally, like just I have a gut feeling as to you know um, a, a certain styles and and who would match up well who, if that makes sense. Yeah. The sort of not so much dream matches, but more like, oh, look, just to pull a name out of there, like, you know, for example, like a Robbie Eagles, he wrestles a certain style. Well, look, I can really see him having a great match with, like, a Zack Sabre Jr., yeah. and then that sort of came into fruition. Or, you know, gee, Aries and Ricochet, they're both, you know, stars of certain eras. Gee, it would be great to see them, you know, in the same ring at the same time. Yeah. Sort of thing. So that sort of helps uh, fuel the fire. And um, and we're a little bit uh, blessed here that I've been able to sort of get guys from sort of Impact Wrestling, from Ring of Honor, a little bit in New Japan, and have them all on on our tour. So we just really be able to. It's not so much cherry picking because it's not about just cherry picking the best from every promotion. It's sort of it's all they've got to work together in the sense of making the show what it is. So it's nice to have a a show that flows all different types of styles, all different types of. Um, looks and all that kind of thing, as opposed to just every every wrestler looking the same, doing the t- same type of wrestling. Yeah, and so World Series wrestling, kind of like Australia itself, it's a melting pot for the for the wrestling world. Where it's, there's, like you mentioned, there's you know people from different from from New Japan, from Ring of Honor, from Impact. Uh, do you ever feel much pressure from outside agencies, like oh, such and such has to go over, such and such has to do this, or anything like that? No, nothing at all. No, everyone uh, so far so good. So. Uh, I found, I mean, Austin Aries I worked with 10 years ago, so when I uh, touched base with him, um, you know, a year ago or a bit more, uh, he was super keen to come back and, and he was sort of saying, look, you know, I'm not taking many dates, but I had such a great experience with you 10 years ago, I'd love to come back. He said, look, I'm only doing nine shows for the rest of uh, 2017 and you're four of them and you're the first show that I'm working. I think he did a promo at House of Hardcore or something, but then these were his first matches he had done since he left. Uh, WWE and, and he was a and he was a, such a um, keen advocate for what we're trying to do and trying to push it and and grow Australian wrestling. So yeah, so uh, as I said, the guys have been really uh, passionate about what I'm trying to achieve here and really keen to to make it work and to the point where they're throwing booking ideas at me all the time and how about this and how about that and oh, I just wrestled such and such here and I spoke to him and he wants to come over and I think we could do this together and da 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 da. So. Um, yeah, it's been really positive, and everyone seems to be rallying ab- around what we're trying to do. So yeah, I've noticed in, in different podcast interviews and what have you, and and even just in, on Twitter and stuff, um, Austin yeah. and Brian Cage as well, real vocal advocates for the way you do things, which is a real good. Uh, it's a testament to to your work as a promoter that they're thank you they're yeah. out there yeah. putting putting the word out like crazy. Yeah, it was it was funny actually. Someone said to me, "Wow." Austin Aries doesn't uh, give too many compliments. So when he does, everyone in the industry sort of sits up and pays attention. So he, um, so when he sort of said those kind words, I was very appreciative. Yeah, yeah. And Brian Cage is I, everywhere, everywhere. Like he was on on Stone Cold show, and he was like, "Yeah, this place down in Australia, World Series Wrestling, they take care of everyone. That's fantastic." I think I saw him tweet about it and stuff. And yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's been very vocal. Putting as well, you over so. like crazy. Yeah, it's good. It's a nice feeling. Yeah. Is is there anyone who has not yet joined a WSW tour who you want to bring out? Who's Who have you got on the radar? Oh, my God. Um, uh, there's a few. There's a few characters floating around. Um, so, I mean, everyone. Who, who would everyone love to see? Who would you like to see, Greg? Well, I've got... Okay, so I've so, some friends of the show, uh, the, yes. the boys from On the Turnbuckle. Uh, Brent and Lyle, yes. they specifically wanted me to ask you Marco Stunt and David Arquette. Ah, oh, there you go. I don't know who Marco Stunt is. Marco Stunt, he's a um, he's a little guy. He was on the Joey Janela shows and uh, and All In. He he had a bit in the in the Rumble on All In. He's definitely worth. Checking oh, out. that little guy. Oh, yeah, yes, the, yes, he's yes, the little. Yes. Guy. I know. He's, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, yeah, he was great in the, in, in the Battle Royal. <laughs> yeah, very entertaining. Yeah. I haven't really looked into him, so uh, but I thought he was great at All In. Uh, Joey Janela, I'd love to bring back. Obviously, we had a, 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 sadly he got injured yeah, and was unable to make the trip. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I spoke to him a couple of days ago, and he's super keen to come back. So we will have to tee that up in the future. David Arquette, yes, he's on the list. I'd love to bring <laughs> David Arquette. Uh, yeah, um, I personally want to see Jordan Grace 
I think Jordan Grace is fantastic. Yes. We'd love to have her yep, come Yep, she's down. great. Yeah. Her and Brian Cage, you reckon, in a showdown? Yes. Yeah, have it come to a head here. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, she's great. Yeah. Uh, there's so many. I mean, I'd love to bring Kenny Omega out. I think he's fantastic. Another one on my mind is a gentleman called Neville. Yes. Uh, who goes by the name Pac. He would be oh, fantastic. Right. So, look, so over the last yeah. year, though, you've run three yes. tours. We're on the eve of the yes. fourth. But across yep, those right. three tours, you've you've run as many single events as most promotions do in a year. So 12 overall across the three tours. Why the touring schedule as opposed to the traditional, you know, having a show every couple of weeks or every month? Oh, okay. It just works better for me and my lifestyle at the moment. So for me to go on tour, or not to me, even to me to do a show every month, just just my life and, and my work and whatever, I just can't commit to that. It's too hard. Right. So um, if I can sort of map it out and, and do it every sort of three months or thereabouts, it, at the moment it just seems to work a little bit better. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and also to, to do... Uh, just one show every month doesn't it doesn't really get me excited. Whereas I like to be able to go city to city and showcase the talent around Australia. So I know this tour, there's a lot of upsetness here in our hometown of Adelaide because we're not returning. Yes. And I know Brisbane uh, would love to see us back up there. And I, I, honestly, I'd love to go to all of them. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, I just see World Series Wrestling as like a national touring company, and we've never uh, performed for the fans in Perth. So I thought it was just our only fair that we gave them an opportunity to see our product live. Yeah, and then our next tour, we may do all, all major cities or we'll go to, back to Brisbane or to Adelaide or, or whatever. So, yeah, it was, just, it was just more important for me to know that we know within 12 months, we've done a show in Brisbane, we've done Adelaide, obviously Melbourne and Sydney, and now we're doing Perth as well. So Yeah, I've, um, been, I've been very angry at Perth fans. I've been telling them every week, pick your game up, sell out these tickets, because that's, that's my birthday. Right, the day that the show yes. is in, but that's my birthday, and it should be here in Adelaide, as far as I'm concerned. So if they don't yeah. sell out, I'm going to be mad. Very upset. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I'll be too. I'll be sad for you. Yeah, because I'll be there thinking that's your birthday, and we should have a sold out crowd. And the show's incredible. Yeah, the first show is just ridiculous. The lineup is stacked. The some of oh the my matches, God, the matches, just ridiculous. Absolutely. So, so well, that's where we're getting Walter and Cody. Yep, yep, yep. First uh, time ever. Aries and Flip for the WSW Championship. Right, yep, yep. So if Flip wins, he'll go on to face Eagles in Sydney. If Aries retains, he'll go on to uh, have his uh, have his match with, with Robbie as well. So um, great opportunity for Robbie as well. He's having a, a phenomenal year, and he's just had a great tour of New Japan. So it's great to have him back in Australia, and, and at least he's got some time to, to join the World Series roster and... Uh, have a shot at our championship, which will be, be the first Australian to ever have a shot at the championship. The first Australian so, to go for it, yeah. 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 And that, that's been the aim. It's been, you know, when we started this 12 months ago, the the, um, the reincarnation of, it was really about, you know, trying to get uh, give some Australians some opportunities to shine, like Concrete Davidson's shining as one half of the tag team champions uh, with Joey Ryan. He's yes. had some great experiences, been in the ring with some world-class tag teams, like the Briscoe Brothers and... Uh, the Young Bucks, of course. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Look, on the last tour, um, we did a podcast about the tour, recapping everything that happened. We spoke to people who went to the shows in all the different states. And something we agreed on was nice. was how well uh, how well the show does at, at integrating the Australian talent and building them in such a way where now, after having such great showings, especially on the iPay-Per-View, which we'll touch on in a moment, um, sure. having, having such great showings, you know, teams like uh, the Perea, for example... Uh, Amazing. Just yep. yeah, and it's elevated to the, that next level where now we could see them going for and even winning those tag team titles. You know, it's it's elevated them up in in the eyes of even people who were watching in America. You know, and seeing these people for the first time on this iPay per view. Absolutely. And so the way the way you take the Australian talent and, and lift them up to that level by by having them in the ring with these guys, even though they're you know not always winning, but just having a competitive match, it it really helps them shine. And when oh, I think, I mean, with the talent is there, the guys are so good yeah. that it's just um, sometimes they're not seen. Yeah. So who are some? So, let's let's yeah. take it. Uh, let's take it to the Australian talent. So obviously, you've sure. already assembled a, a huge roster of the best of Australian wrestling. You got Adam Brooks. You know, all of, yeah. You've got the PWG three with Robbie, Adam, and uh, Jonah. Uh, yeah. You've yeah. got all, all the best guys from PWA. I mean, Bonza, Moretti. You got the the Philip brothers. And the the list goes on. There's just fantastic talent all around that you guys are bringing in. Who's someone? Again, we'll talk about Australia now. Who are some people you've got your eye on? You know, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I I watched a show Riot City Wrestling here in Adelaide. Uh, the guys there are great. 
uh, Chris Basso, Matt Basso, uh, Big Body Marshall, they're always a part of the tours and yeah. they're fantastic and they're already established but as far as the, the next wave of talent, I saw a guy on that show which, who, who worked a dark match for us in Sydney a couple of tours ago, Wahlberg. I think he's great. Matty um, Wahlberg. Yeah, Matty yeah. Wahlberg. I think he's I think he's a star on the rise. And uh, if I was to if I was a betting man, I'd be betting on him. I think he's got all the tools, incredible charisma, great look. Um, will be a star, um, one hundred percent. But the, the, you know, that, so he's definitely one that that I that jumps out. Obviously, you mentioned the Pereira. Those guys are great. And there's a lot of guys that are, are still finding their way. Who I think have got some tremendous potential as well, but I won't name I won't name them. But yeah, there's a lot of guys out there who I've seen work, and I just think you know what you've got so much uh, natural ability. Once you just sort of sort your gimmick out, like just when I say gimmick, like just your look, your your um, dress coat, like your uh, ring gear, and all the rest of it. Uh, there's a it's lot like of talent here in Australia. It, yeah, you just fine tune their their gimmick. Uh, there's a lot of talent in Australia. So even if the uh, the Robbies of the world go to New Japan, or the Jonas go here, or the Brooksies go there. There's a lot of talent in the, uh, you know, to, to come up and shine. So, oh yeah, we've um, got we've yeah. got we've got plenty of people waiting in the wings to take those spots. Yeah, and there's, exactly. there's some people That's that are hungry well too. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong though. It seems like you do have sort of working relationships with different promotions. I mean, you, you obviously the Riot City guys, the PWA guys. I think uh, PCW in in Melbourne. You in Melbourne, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for Aussie talent who want to catch your eye, is the best way to try and get in with those promotions, or is it possible for talent working outside those groups to get a foot in the door? Like, because for me, names like uh, Jackson Kelly in New South Wales or Matt Hayter yes. here in South Australia, in particular, yeah, it's they, fantastic, Matt Hayter. Yeah, 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 they strike me as as two guys that are both really promising and not necessarily aligned with any of those major groups. Sure, sure, sure. So with me, I'm uh, when I say neutral, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I love all those those promotions you mentioned. Um, I think they all do a fantastic job as far as professionalism, as far as cultivating talent, as far as running shows. Right. All those promotions you mentioned are amazing. And we've just partnered up with EPW in Perth, who I want to give a shout out to. They've been fantastic. Really looking forward to working with those guys in a, in a few weeks' time. Of course. Yeah. Um, but, but in saying that, as you may be aware, you know, um, we use talent not just from uh, um, like Riot City here in Adelaide, we use like you know Jonas. He's he's part of Wrestle Rampage. Yeah, we Rampage. use Jonah. We use AJ Istria. Um, you know here in, here in South Australia. Um, so we are open to other talent. It's not so much just that that there. I'd like you know those particular promotions you mentioned. But in saying that, as far as actually seeing talent, like it's hard. It's, it's hard for me because there's so many shows on all the time, and I honestly don't. So like I can turn on Fox Fox Eight and think, oh look, I'm going to watch this particular uh, local wrestling show tonight or that particular local wrestling show. So as far as actually seeing talent and whatever, and you know, and seeing them, seeing all these different talents and all their uh, abilities, I, I I physically don't get to see them all. So yeah, you mention names and I may yeah. be aware of them or I may I may know a photo of them, but as far as actual in ring ability, I just think, well, you know, I'm sure you've I've never never seen you. So if anyone's ever interested. By all means, like sending, uh, emailing us, um, even like just their, their best match, so at least we can see them in action. And so I think, okay, this this guy might work for this role going forward because there's yeah. a lot of people out there, and it's just a matter of really seeing them. Absolutely. So, well, you, t- yeah. you touched on something there that was actually my next question. Sure. You, know, you talk about you, you can't really turn tune on and see Australian wrestling on TV or anything like that. Yeah. What's the goal for WSW? Do you see it? Going to places like that is that something that could eventually happen? Where you know, okay. make it anything more accessible. Can, anything can happen in WSW. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, ultimately that would be the aim. I'd love to be on TV. Yeah, and I just think it'd be a great uh, platform. There's no reason why we can't have a a weekly, you know, one hour wrestling show on TV. And even if it's just seasonal, like we might do, you know. 10 episodes a year or 20 episodes a year or whatever. I don't know what, what, in what capacity, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and channels are, you know, screaming for content out there. There's so much, so many digital channels out there. I'm sure at some stage, uh, something will happen, but, um, yeah, I think it'd be fantastic. Yeah. Well, I, think great the talent's there. I think the talent's oh. there and I think we're yeah. isolated enough too, where we could do it seasonal. Like just because other places in the world do wrestling year round doesn't mean we have to, you know? Oh, I, no, I agree. I mean, that, you know, there's no reason why a channel couldn't buy like a 20 episode commitment, and uh, 
buys 20 episodes of World Series Wrestling and we just produce 21 hour episodes and then you know once that finishes then we can tour around Australia and then do it again next season or something yeah absolutely yeah so if uh, any that, network that, that, executives are out there listening absolutely <laughs> um, well we did have the eye paper view last time around yes uh, are we, can we expect more of those with Fight TV or, uh, or anyone absolutely else? yeah 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 so we're open to doing all these things I mean the tour before that we streamed the whole show live on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and I noticed we had sort of 19,000 views while it was happening, so that was great. I thought that was great exposure. And then the last one, we had the iPay-Per-View. This tour here, we won't be doing an iPay-Per-View, just logistically uh, to do that setup to stream it and all the rest of it with all the different camera angles. It's quite an involved process. Yeah. And uh, we won't be able to do that on, on this particular tour, just uh, logistically trying to coordinate everything. It hasn't been possible. Fair so um, we might look at that next time. But, yeah, it's something that's definitely um, something that we're interested in pursuing. And obviously the shows are available on Global Wrestling Network. They come yeah, out on DVD that, as well. They do, absolutely. Yep. So people should definitely check out the World Series Wrestling website for the store to pick up the DVDs. And Global Wrestling Network, That I mean, Impact do those one-night-only tour things that they do. Is there yeah. a chance we could even get one of those one day? Is that something – have you talked to them about it? Yeah, everything's possible. <laughs> Yeah, no, everything's possible, mate. Yeah, and they 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 reached out to me, uh, and said we'd love you to be a part of uh, what we're doing over here. So that was great. So uh, now our content's all on the uh, the GWN app, so fans all over the world can can come and watch our matches. And again, it just gives Australian wrestlers who are on that there an international platform to be seen. So fans of Impact Wrestling anywhere in the world who who are part of the app might sort of think, oh, look, I want to see. Oh, I look, Austin Aries is wrestling Adam Brooks. You know, I'd love to watch that. Or, gee, look, you know, the Briscoes wrestled the Phillip Brothers. Cool, I'd love to watch that. So, you know, it just gives them uh, another another outlet to be seen, which is great. Yeah, well, Moretti, Sexton, uh, Big, Big Brody Marshall were all on Impact one Oh, week yes, yeah, that's with true that match too. with Brian yeah. Cage, which was amazing. So That was incredible. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that was great yeah. exposure for them. The four-way, which took place here in Adelaide. Yeah. So the the upcoming tour, Melbourne on yep. the 23rd and 24th, Perth on the 25th, Sydney on the 26th, uh, lots of incredible matchups being announced, World Calibre stuff. Some of the match posters you guys have been releasing are amazing too. Shout out to <laughs> who, whoever's doing those fantastic posters. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the posters have been great. And then a, a, a super fan of ours, Tom underscore Customs, who is an American-based guy, uh, he just loves putting posters together of amazing matches and Thankfully, he thinks our uh, matches are amazing, so he's been putting together some amazing posters in in recent time, which is great as well. Yeah, so look, what can people expect if they come out to a World Series wrestling show later this month? What, what they've expected, what, what they've seen all other times, just world-class matches, honestly, from from match to match, every match delivers, every match really is like a main event anywhere in the world. Uh, fans definitely get their money's worth, and because it is an intimate setting, every seat's a great seat. They're a part of something... Uh, the meet and greet before they get to meet all the wrestlers, you know, have photos with them, shake their hands, share their thoughts. And the wrestlers are really cool. Like every wrestler we've brought out so far have been, uh, have, have loved it, have, have had such a great time. They've had a great interaction and experience with the fans here in Australia. So, yeah, that'll all be great again. And where can people find you on social media, Adrian? Well, we're, we're everywhere. So World Series Wrestling is on Instagram. We're on Twitter and also on Facebook. So, yeah, I mean, if definitely join us, follow us if you haven't already. There's posts every day of what's happening, uh, new match announcements, uh, different clips, different videos. And also, too, for those who don't have the GWN app and are, are not interested uh, or don't want to order DVDs or whatever, uh, we also post certain matches on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to that. And after every tour, we always upload at least one or two matches from each each live event so people can get like a taste of what they've uh, missed if they haven't been or they get to relive it if they were there. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Adrian. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on, on the show. So there you have it, folks. World Series Wrestling. Uh, it's been a year since they came back and they are just going from strength to strength. Who knows what the future holds? I look forward to talking to Adrian again uh, in the future and, and seeing where World Series Wrestling ends up. I'm very excited for the future of World Series Wrestling and for the future of Australian Pro Wrestling. And if you like that interview, make sure you get out and check out the other Aussie Grappler and Grappler adjacent interviews that took place this week. Wrestle Radio Australia sat down with Mitch and Jesse from Pro Wrestling League to talk all about setting up the Pro Wrestling League are running their first show ever next weekend 
I have seen this. It's been on my radar, but I, for some reason, I, I haven't talked about it. But they're uh, bringing and uh, uh, hoping to bring more professional wrestling to Queensland. You know, with an emphasis on the professional, they talk about you know how important you know things like the entrance and the vibe and the setting and all that sort of stuff are, and all the hardships of setting up a first time show. Very exciting stuff. So Mitch and Jesse from Pro Wrestling League on Wrestle Radio Australia. Also, of course, our friends on the turnbuckle had a chat with. Lover boy, son, Lucky Hendrix himself uh, came on the show to basically just uh, argue with Tony for the duration. I thought it was a fantastic interview to listen to. Uh, gave a real insight into Lover boy, Lucky Hendrix as a character and a person. And I am terrified of interviewing this man should I ever get the opportunity. But hey, Lover boy, if you're listening, I- I'd love to have you on to berate me a little for being such a momo. Andy Rhodes also stopped by on the turnbuckle to talk about the upcoming Gippsland Pro Wrestling show and their um, donating to Beyond Blue and the situation there, which we will talk about in just a moment as I tell you everything that's going on this weekend in Aussie Graps, starting in Victoria. Saturday night, PCW present Destiny at their home in Ferntree Gully, the South Eastern Entertainment Centre. Andy Walker, Jamie Durden, Royce Chambers, Charlie Matthews, and Thomas Crow will all compete in a ladder match with the winner earning a 12-month contract and the PCW Slam Championship. Team Cage takes on Team Daniels in a Survivor Series match, continuing the Mark Cage and Lucas Daniels rivalry. Murdoch, James Sly, Corey Hendricks, and Broderick Marshall compete to determine the PCW Slam number one contender and much, much more. Tickets start at $20. Also on Saturday night in Victoria, New Age Wrestling present NAW Live in Albion. Aiden Miller takes on Gore with his brother Crackerjack in tow. Raw Beef defend the tag titles against Payne. Richie Taylor goes one-on-one with Gabriel Wolf, And Cody Swift gets his NAW Heavyweight Championship rematch against Tyler Frost. Tickets for this one start at $15. Over in Gippsland or Traralgon, uh, we touched on it just briefly, Gippsland Pro Wrestling present Persevere. Fox vs. Loverboy Lockie Hendricks, Aria vs. Bianca, Adam Brooks takes on the player Jake Lindo, Mitch Waterman and Muhammad Ali Vaez go one-on-one to determine the number one contender, and much, much more with JXT, Slade Mercer, Nick Berry, Andy Rhodes, and more slated to appear. Tickets start at $15, and 100% of all ticket sales and GPW merch sales from this show go to supporting Beyond Blue after the tragic suicide of Judd Newman, which we talked about on the show a few months ago. And of course, there is a fantastic episode of Wrestle Radio Australia around that time as well, where Todd Eastman sat down with Gino Gambino, Big Brody Marshall, and Riot City Wrestling's Wolf Dog to talk about depression, to talk about dealing with these things, and to talk about talking. It's very important podcast, very important situation with the amount of men in Australia killing themselves daily. It's it's tragedy. It's terrible. So get out, if you're in the area, or if you are able to get to the area, get out and check some local graps at Gippsland, all while supporting Beyond Blue, a fantastic cause, we, we need to do something about this. So it's, it's great to see the guys, you know, doing this, and I hope this becomes a regular occurrence. Over in Western Australia on Friday night, New Horizons Pro Wrestling present a Night of Anarchy. That's night with a K. I, I see what they did there. Because the show features a match between Soraya Knight, who is, of course, wrestling royalty, mother of WWE SmackDown general manager Paige. There's a documentary about them. There's a movie coming out about them. She's a former Shimmer champion, a former Indie Girls Australia champion, the current Bellatrix world champion, and most importantly, the current Blackcraft women's champion. And she is coming to Perth to go one-on-one with Lena Cross at Vision Studios. Soraya will be putting that Blackcraft Wrestling Women's Championship on the line, so victory can only come by way of tap out or knockout. So Lena Cross has her work cut out for her tonight if she wants to take the gold from one of the toughest women to ever lace up a pair of boots. Tickets for that one are $15. On Saturday, Southern Hemisphere Wrestling Alliance, Schwa, present victory at the Don Russell Performing Arts Center. Leon Tully takes on Axton. Del Cano goes one-on-one with Julian Ward and Jeremiah Kingsley faces off against Kyle Grayson, all in qualifying action for the upcoming Pride Championship number one contenders ladder match. Odin and Dave Marshall settle the score in a grudge match, and Craven defends his Schwa Championship against David Nero. Tickets for this show start at $12.50. 
And finally, in New South Wales on Saturday night in Marion, Wrestling Go present Face Off at the Marion Community Centre. The Prefects will be on the show making their Wrestling Go debut against mystery opponents. Now, the video that announced this match did leave a little bit of a clue to their opponents. You'll have to watch it to see what I mean. But I have a feeling it may be against Surf and Turf, the current Watermelon Champion, Dolph Finn, and Combat Wombat. The Plastics, Nikki Van Blair and Jason Dewhurst, they have a special announcement to make. Uh, the, the mayor of, of Wrestling Go has, has said that they have a special announcement to make this Saturday as well. Unsocial Jordan has a match with the Prince of All Wrestling, Michael Spencer, after a bit of a Twitter back and forth. And Diego Retamales defends the gold medal against Josh Gatt. Much, much more going on on this show as well. Tickets for that one are just $15. Meanwhile, same night on the coast, Jackson Kelly starts his reign as Newcastle Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion and continues his campaign to rename Nui Pro to Manly Pro Wrestling when Nui Pro take on Club Maitland City for the first time for Eagles vs. Bonza. The name says it all. Eagles vs. Bonza, the main event of the evening, will be Robbie Eagles returning from New Japan Pro Wrestling to Australia to take on Jack Bonza, the real man, the leader of the Red Nation. But that's not all. New heavyweight champ Jackson Kelly takes on Matt Diamond. Tar Lee goes one-on-one with Harley Wonderland, so the Nui Pro faithful are more familiar with Harley. Tar Lee only made her debut last month, but this venue is hallowed ground for the Hunter Valley Wrestling's Star Lee. Will that be enough to give her the advantage? All this and more. Tickets start at just $10 for that one. Get out, support your local grapplers, go to a local show, enjoy the wrestling, Cheer the good guys, boo the bad guys, that's what it's all about. Buy a shirt, support the guys and girls, and watch them do what they love to do. If you like what we do here at the B Plus Wrestling, we want to hear from you. Please, you know, shoot us a message, leave us a comment on Facebook, give us a five-star review on iTunes if you feel so inclined. I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit, and the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Thank you so much for listening. Hold one! Arm drag! You're not doing this, get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list! Oh my god! So, no speak English. Dummy! Goodbye and good night! Hold two! Arm bar! This is the worst town I've ever it's still real to me, damn it! Coming now. Hold three. The moss covered.